Good morning everyone and welcome to another video on Mr. Ong Math Lesson. And in this morning video, we are going to revise the measurement section of the year 9 and year 10 exam. So without further ado, let's go. The first question is about conversion. So you need to know conversion between distance, which is kilometers, meters, centimeter and millimeter. You also need to know how to convert kilogram, the masses, kilogram to gram to tons, and also most likely is going to be uh, capacity, liters to milliliters. So in this question, we are looking at distance. So the first question is convert 105 millimeters to kilometers. So you do not know this is a good diagram to know. So from kilometer to meter to meter to centimeter and centimeter to millimeter to convert kilometer to meters you multiply by a thousand meter to centimeter multiply by a hundred centimeter to millimeter you times ten. If you do the other way around millimeter to centimeter you do the reverse. So instead of times ten you divide by ten times hundred you divide by a hundred and instead of a multiply by a thousand you divide by a thousand. Okay. So the okay. So we shall look at the question. Hundred and five mm to kilometer. So you are here. You want to go here, so you need to do 105 divided by 10, divided by 100, divided by 1000, put in your calculator, and the answer is 0 0.000105. Great. Okay, now the next one. Simpler. 17.3 meter to centimeter. So you are here. You want to reach here. So you take 17.3, multiply by 100, and it should give you 1730 centimeter. And don't forget to put your unit because in measurement without unit, you lose half a mark. Next question is about area 300 meters squared to hectares. You need to know this one hectare is equivalent to 10,000 meters squared. So you have to convert hectare to meter squared, you multiply by a thousand. If you are in meter squared, you want to convert to hectare, you divide by a thousand. So in our case, we have 300 meters squared. We are here. You want to get a hectare, so you divide 300, divide by 10,000. Then put your calculator is 0 0.03. Not too bad, right? Let's go. Now we shall go at question two. Find the area of the shaded region. The diameter of the larger circle is 27.4. So the diameter is 27.4 and the diameter of the smaller circle is 4.5. So to get the area of the shaded region, the blue region, you have to take the area of the big circle minus the area of the smaller circle. So to calculate the area of the big circle, you first need to change to the radius. So the diameter is 27.4. To find the radius, you halve it. So you get 13.7. Similarly, for the small circle, the red diameter is 4.5, you halve it, the, the radius is going to be 2.25. So the area of the big circle is pi r squared. This formula will be given in the formula booklet. So your radius is 13.7. So pi times 13.7 times 13.7, put in your calculator, it's 589.65. Similarly, for the area of the small circle or the white circle, it's pi times 2.5. 2.25 times 2.25 because the radius is 2.25. Put in your calculator, it's 15.9 centimeters squared. So to calculate the area of the shaded region or the blue region, you just take that area minus that area, 589.65 minus 15.9, you should get 573.75 because I did a calculation earlier. Okay, great. Now question three, okay? Okay. Calculate the perimeter and area of a regular hexagon. A regular hexagon means all the sides are the same. If the side is 6, so every side is going to be 6. And the length of AB is 12, so this double 12. And the height is 5.2. Okay? So first, to calculate the perimeter is easy. You're going to have 6 plus 6 plus 6 plus 6 plus 6 plus 6. Or 6 times 6 is going to be 36 centimeter. That will be easy. One mark for you. To calculate the area of the trapezium, okay? What you need to do, you need to calculate, to calculate the area of this hexagon, you need to calculate the area of this uh, trapezium and you times 2. So to calculate the area of the trapezium, it's A plus B times 2, divided by 2 times height. This is given a formula. So A and B are the two parallel sides. So in this case, A and B is the 6 and the 12. So you take 6 and 12, you halve it. So you get an average of 6 and 12, and you come up to 9. And you multiply by the perpendicular height, it's 5.2, is 46.8. I forgot, because there are two trapezium, so area of the trapezium, okay, is going to be 
double of that because we only calculated one so the answer will be 93.6 centimeter square okay so don't forget you only found the area of the top part you must also find the area of the bottom part which is the same so you must multiply by two and the answer is going to be 93.6 centimeter square okay great good now we shall look at the simple question calculate the volume of the cylinder they told you the volume is pi r square h very simple uh, the diameter is 11.5, so the first thing you do, you need to find the radius, because the formula is the radius, so you divide by 2, 5.75. One, you know this, put this formula, and then just substitute the values. Pi, radius is 5.75 times 5.75, and the height is 6.7. Chuck in your calculator, and the answer is 695.92. Make sure you have a unit, and that will give you another mark in the exam. Okay, the last question on measurement is about time, okay? So let's read. Jim is planning to visit his auntie in Perth. His travel schedule indicated that he leaves Palmerston off at 19.55. So 7.55 p.m. for a 1 hour 10 minute flight. If you add 1 hour 10 minutes, he will reach Auckland at 21.05 or 9.05. Okay? He has to have a 1 hour and 25 minute transit in Auckland. So you have to wait in Auckland for 1 hour 25. So that will come up to 10.30 or 22.30 in Auckland. His flight will take 6 hours and 30 minutes, so 6 hours and 35 minutes we will reach Perth at 0505 hours in New Zealand time. But because Perth is 5 hours behind, so you must minus 5, so he's going to reach Perth at 0 0.005 hours or 12.05 just past midnight. So hopefully you go through this exam paper and you should be able to do well. Make sure you do watch the other videos on all the revision on all the year 9 and year 10 stuff you should be all good for the coming exam cheers everyone have a good day